Hey, if your wife is looking for the perfect jewelry for Christmas, I think I've got just the answer right here. Hey, if your wife is looking for the perfect jewelry gift for Christmas, don't pay any attention to this particular video. But if you're looking for a good chain and some information about chains, let's get started. Today we're going to talk about chains, log chains, transport chains, rigging chains. I don't know, they got a lot of different names. The names may not be interchangeable, but for what we're discussing, it doesn't really matter. We're not going to discuss every single thing there is to know about chains. Rather, we're going to discuss everything that I think you need to know about chains in order to be able to use them effectively with your compact tractor. We'll start with talking some of the basics of chains, the grades and sizes. Uh, we'll start with sizes first. This is quarter inch chain, and the way you indicate what size chain you're dealing with is the thickness of the link here. So I can take my calipers, and this says 0.27 inches, so it's a little better than a quarter inch, actually. Uh, this is 5 sixteenths, okay, measured the same way, 0.35. And this is 3 8 inch chain, okay? 0.395 it's showing there, 0 0.40. Not exact measurements, but that's, that's what we're talking about. Now on the farm, we use half inch log chain. So they get a lot bigger than this. I've even seen 5 8 chain uh, used on, in ag purposes. Of course, they make a lot bigger chains. If you've ever been on one of those big naval ships, the huge chains, you know, with links this big around used to lower those anchors. It's amazing, amazing stuff. Okay, how about grades? The grades come in grade 30, 43, 70, 80, 100, and now 120, I believe, is offered. Hey, Martha, do you care about chains? You like chains, too? Um, this one is either a grade 30 or a grade 43. Uh, all of these gold-looking ones are grade 70. So this is grade 70, this is grade 70, and believe it or not, this one here. Hey, what you doing? What you doing? You in a bind up there? Believe it or not, this one here is grade 70 as well. It's a little bit worn. I'll explain some more about that in a minute. So to boil this down simply, the grading of the chain, it, uh, a bigger number is stronger. So a grade 30 or a grade 43 chain is not going to be nearly as strong as a 70, 80, 100, 120 grade. Likewise, they're not going to be as expensive. Now, there are some legal reasons that you have to choose a particular grade. I'm not going to go into those too much, but just a little bit. If you're going to be using a chain to tie down an attachment or a tractor on a truck, it needs to be at least grade 70. That's what we've got here. All three of the chains that, we've, that we're showing you here are grade 70 chains. Um, that's a requirement. If you're going to be lifting overhead, like uh, attaching something and then picking it up over your head, and you're in any sort of an OSHA environment, you have to have a grade 80 chain for that. 100, 120, I don't, I don't know too much about any more legal requirements, and, and again, for compact tractor owners, I don't think I care. So we've got the size. I've shown you quarter inch, 5 sixteenths, and 3 eighths. We've got the grades, 30, 43, 70, 80, 100, 120. What do you need? Well, if you're using a subcompact tractor, this is what I recommend right here. I recommend the grade 70 in the quarter inch size. The working load limit, I believe, is over 3,000 pounds, 3,150 for this. You can tell grade 70, by the way, because it is gold, uh, but the working load limit of 3,150 is more than your little tractor can pull. Why not get a bigger one? You know, if a little does a little good, a lot will do a lot of good, or bigger is always better, right? Well, the main reason not to get a bigger chain is how heavy it is to lift. You'll find a major difference in the amount of steel that you have to carry around on a heavier chain. So I would recommend using the lightest and strongest chain that you know for sure will do the job. For subcompact tractors, for standard pulling, um, lifting, grade 70 quarter inch chain is great and it's really lightweight, really easy to handle. I bought this 5 16th grade 70 chain to tie down Casey earlier on and Johnny 5 now where I know that I need heavier working load limits than what a quarter inch can handle. It's easy to determine the working load limits of chains. 
I'll put a table right here, in fact, so that you can see the different working load limits of each of the sizes of chains. You want to make sure when you're using them for transport tie down, you want to make sure that every link in the chain, and I mean that a little bit figuratively, has a, a safe working load limit. Uh, for example, the hooks themselves have a working load limit, and the chain itself has a working load limit. The binders or boomers that you use have a working load limit. Every one of those items has to be up to the desired working load limit to be able to hold down your equipment safely. So for me, I had to have this 5 16 chain to be able to handle Johnny 5 or Casey. I can use that 5 16 chain for other purposes, uh, but it's kind of overkill if I'm using a subcompact tractor. Now, for Johnny 5 or Johnny 2, this is not a, not a bad size. 5 16 a lot of people use it, um, but it's just a little bit heavier. Again, we can show you the relative weights in a chart right here, and you can see why a quarter inch chain might be exactly what you need. Now let's look at this larger one. This is a 3 8 grade 70 chain. A customer actually gave this to me and he, it has an interesting story. Uh, not only that, but he has a lot of interesting stories about from where he works. They have to throw away these chains. They throw them out after they have used them a certain number of times. So after they've been tensioned a certain number of times, uh, they're deemed not to be safe anymore. Well, it's perfect for what we need uh, ar around here. We're not going to be pulling very many times with it, so even though it's technically uh, outlived its safe life, we still have plenty of opportunity to, to get some good out of it here. This is 3 h chain. It's getting a lot heavier. One other thing you can see about this chain is that it's lost its gold color, okay? So back to the transport needs, I would encourage you to get separate chains for your transport needs than you use for other needs because you'll wear that gold color off. And I would say that it's a little easier to go through an inspection if the DOT officer can see that you're using a brand new gold colored chain. He knows immediately it's grade 70. He knows it's not gonna be worn. Uh, if he sees this old chain here, he's probably gonna inspect you closer. Now that's just rumor and that's just maybe emotion speaking, but uh, I would try to use good quality and good looking chains for transport. Let's talk about the hooks on the end of your chain. This is called a grab hook. And it's a grab hook because it slides right in between the links and grabs, just like that, okay? Contrast that with a slip hook. Now this is a slip hook with a little bit of a lock on it. But a slip hook, once you get it put through here, well, naturally I would have trouble, uh, it will slide and slip so that you can, you can put it around something and, and when you pull it tight, it, it will pull tight like a rope, you might think. There's probably a better way to explain that, but I hope you get the concept. This wider hook here allows the chain to slide through it. The narrower hook, which is consistent all the way through here is meant to grab onto an existing link and, and, and hold that uh, connection. Now this is a modification on the standard grab hook. This is a locking grab hook. So in this case, if you loop around and grab your chain and you want to make sure that it doesn't drop, you can use this little lock. Okay. These hooks are available at boltonhooks.com. Probably many other places as well, but uh, boltonhooks.com is a is where I got these. Now, the hooks, just like the chain, are sized. This is a 5 16 hook, and I've got it on a quarter inch chain. Is that legal? Yeah, it's legal. Does it benefit anything? Well, the only benefit is that I can hook this into a bigger chain. In fact, a 5 16 will actually hook into a 3 8 chain. I demonstrated a minute ago, but yeah, there I go. So I can hook this into a 3 h chain. So it'll hook one size bigger than what it states. So that kind of summarizes the different types of chains, the different types of hooks. How about I show you how to use them? This is one of the best uses of a chain and a small compact tractor or subcompact tractor. These are Ken's bolt-on hooks. You've heard us describe them and talk about them on this channel a lot. 
Um, they come with a little plate already. These are 5 16 grab hooks. You've saw, seen the hook types we've described. And so you, you, you get your item in the middle of the bucket here somewhere and get the lip of your bucket under it. And then you bring the chain around the front of the item. So let's say I wanted to haul me around, right? You take the chain around the front of the item and you just hook it right in there, right? And then you can tilt the bucket back and you'll keep the item from falling out of your bucket. For most of you, this is way too simple and you understand this, but, but please be a little forgiving because several of you are new with your tractors and, and you need this kind of basic education. So let's keep going here. How long of a chain do you need for this type of application? This particular chain is 10 feet and I think it's plenty long for this application. Most everything that you would be able to carry in your bucket, you could wrap around and use this 10 foot chain. By the way, this is the reason I like chains instead of uh, straps, is because it's easy to get the exact link you need. You can slide there and grab in any link you want. One other comment, this is that quarter inch chain and it is handled nicely by those 5 16 grab hooks. So you don't have to have exactly the same size grab hooks that you have chain. Let's see another use. Let's say you want to pull something with your tractor. The best place to hook is low to the tractor and right on the frame somewhere. You do not want to hook way up high on the tractor. I'll talk about that more in a minute. But we're going to demonstrate this by hooking right here by the drawbar. The drawbar itself is designed to be able to pull anything the tractor can pull. So if you're hooking to the drawbar itself, you'll have no issue. In this case, I'm hooking right beside the drawbar on these little slots here that at least look to me like they've been designed uh, perfectly to handle a chain. Of course, if you have a clevis like this, you can always hook to the drawbar itself. Here's an example of being hooked directly to the drawbar with a clevis. Now your 1025R does not have a drawbar that sticks out like this, um, but it does have what looks a little like a drawbar. It has a pinhole and the, a clevis like this can still work. It's a strong enough drawbar for a 1025R. If you do want a more substantial drawbar, my recommendation is to go to heavyhitch.com and you can get a two inch receiver tube mount that, that goes right in here and then uh, get a two inch receiver with a real drawbar in it. That extends the drawbar out. It's really helpful for like uh, sprayers or fertilizer spreaders that are meant for garden tractors. It extends that drawbar and allows it to be turned easier, right, without the wheels running into the three-point hitch or any of the mechanism uh, contacting the tractor. But if you have a larger tractor, you'll likely have a drawbar. I do know that the three E's don't come standard with them. If you're looking at a three E tractor, make sure you go ahead and purchase a drawbar. It's important. Okay, let's talk a little bit about how we hook a chain. I'll get a different position here for a better look. Okay, so one place to never hook a chain, at least in my opinion, is on your quick hitch or on your three-point arms at all. It's just entirely too high. And if you do hook onto your three-point arms and something goes awry, those three-point arms can come up quickly. There's nothing that are keeping those arms down. There is never any down pressure on a three-point hitch. Well, there are some tractors that can apply it, but it's a very unique feature. Um, so do not use this, especially do not use this top hook for trying to pull something. That's a, a, a quick way to turn your tractor over backwards um, and certainly even before that you don't get optimal pulling power. If you're pulling really low it puts a different twist on your tractor and allows your front wheels to help you pull a little bit more. So I don't recommend that. But for sake of discussion and because it's right here and handy for me I'm going to use this point as an example of how you can wrap a chain around something and get it hooked up good. Here we go. When I wrap it around, I typically go around from the top and I hook the chain in like this. And the reason is the weight of the chain hook will keep it from coming unhooked, right? And then this is how you pull it. So you don't, you don't try to hook onto something uh, with, the, with the grab hook, right? You don't, you don't try to grab something with it. You always use it to grab a, another piece of a chain. You don't have to have this really tight, right? This can be, you know, loosened as far down here as you want. Now, when I run this through up through here the other way, and I hook it like this, 
it will come unhooked, or it's very likely to. See how that works? So when you hook something up, so when you wrap around your item, typically you wrap around from top to bottom, and then that allows the chain hook to have gravity on its side to keep it hooked while you're doing the other end, okay? That's a little trick that, well, Dad would grouch at me every time it came unhooked because I would fail to hook it up properly. So this is, this is the mechanism. Drop it over the top, pull it back up, let the gravity from that chain hook keep that hook hooked. <laughs> okay, time for an exercise. I've hooked a Johnny 5, and I've hooked a Johnny. Ready to pull, right? No, not quite. Why not? This one's easy, I've already explained this. This is not a substantial point to hook. It's too high, it's too far from the frame. So we'll have to find a new spot there. How about this side? I would like to say a general rule is do not hook to an attachment. So I'm not going to use the word never, but do not hook to an attachment. You really need to go low and in toward the frame. So let's look at both ends a little better and see if we can find the appropriate place to hook. So I'm just going to use some basic logic here and disobey a rule that I just quoted. Don't hook to an attachment. Well, in this case, the backhoe is very firmly attached to the tractor. These subframes on these new backhoes are made incredibly strong. They often run way up into the, the, the midsection of the tractor in order to prevent any issues. So I'm actually going to take it here and run the chain right over this backhoe subframe right here. There comes my hook. And again, I'll put the gravity on my side right there. And I've got it hooked up. That meets the main criteria, which is it's low. It meets the second criteria, uh, at least loosely, because the backhoe frame is loosely a part of the tractor frame in this case. One could perhaps say that I should climb under there and hook it closer to the frame, but I believe that I'm taking minimal risk here hooking it to the backhoe frame. Let's take a look at Johnny 5 and see where we should hook there. So we've got a little bit of a pivot point here in the middle. We've got two big casts coming right down which are a part of the frame. And I'm going to take this chain and, and go around both of those pieces of cast right above this pivot point and grab it just like that. Now that's actually down here below the actual frame piece, but I believe it's going to be fine. Now, in truth, I know that little Johnny's not going to be able to pull very much on Johnny 5, so there's really no issue here. I'm just trying to provide some um, guidance, and yet it's not real technical, here's your absolute way to do it. It's just to provide some guidance, some instruction on how to connect to a piece of equipment. Uh, I'm always nervous when I see people disconnect to something up here or just use the grab hook and grab like that, you know. So that, that's, that's all I'm trying to accomplish here. Now let's talk a little bit about the length of chain for this application. Uh, as I said earlier, the 10-foot section of chain was really perfect for using on the front bucket. But for this application, 10 feet is going to be pretty rough, especially by the time we wrap all the way around. Right, 10 feet is just not going to be enough to give us any safety room at all here for pulling. Especially for a situation like this where Johnny Five, he might be trying to get himself out of the mud. So the driver of that machine is, is pulling forward and as soon as he hits a little bit of solid ground, he's going to go forward and he has to be very careful not to hit in this situation. So you really need longer than 10 feet for this. You can either choose to get, say, one 20 foot piece of chain 15 to 20 foot, I'd say 15 minimum. The one that we've got here is 15. That doesn't leave a lot of space here, you see. Or you can choose to get different chains for different purposes. That's up to you. With the quarter inch chain, I think you can handle carrying 20 foot of it. If you're getting up to 3 8 chain and, and you're not as young as you used to be, that's going to be a load. Now I want to show you this chain. It was not treated properly. It was mistreated. I'll tell you the story about it, and I'll show you how to not have this happen. I'll give you an up-close look, 
and you can see that those links have been stretched. They're longer than what they're supposed to be. This whole chain has been stretched. If you stretch them far enough, they'll break. Uh, here's a link that's illustrating the stretch really bad. You can maybe see it there. The most often way that a chain gets mistreated is by jerking it, okay? Don't jerk someone's chain. That's all there is to it. So let me show you how you get started pulling. What you'll see is, is that we're gonna tighten the chain gently, and then once that chain is tight, you can pull with all your might. And that's generally the case with most any size equipment. It's that, that jerk that you can't do. I must not have Johnny Five in park because Johnny was able to move him even in two wheel drive. So I'm a little surprised at that. But I hope you noticed how I got the chain tight, did not jerk it. And now to tell you the story about my chain here. I almost lost a neighbor over this chain and the result of it. Uh, two neighbors actually came over and they said, uh, hey, can we borrow your chain? I said, sure, no problem. I guess I grew up on a farm and I kind of assumed people just knew how to deal with change. It never occurred to me, but of course I am a little picky. So I was busy doing something else and I could not help them. So I just said, well, here's the chain and, and handed it to them and, and proceeded back towards my house. I glanced over my shoulder to see them hooking onto a tree with their truck and there was probably eight or 10 feet of slack in this chain and they took off as hard as they could with the truck. Meanwhile, I was turning around yelling, wait, 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 don't jerk it, don't jerk it. And uh, I probably got a little bit too uptight. You know, I was young, almost lost a neighbor over it, over a silly chain that was probably a grade 30 or grade 43. Who cares? But yeah, don't jerk anyone's chain. How do you store your chain? I'll give you maybe two or three options here. One is this Artillion ROP system. Uh, this, I believe, was the beverage cooler holder, but hey, it could work good for holding chains. Um, I've got a couple in there now, along with Clevis. Uh, stuff might fall out the side of it. I don't know that this is the best one. There's some other baskets that they might have. Any sort of a basket like that. Another option um, that I've just now installed is from bolt-on hooks, and it attaches to the side of your iMatch hitch, and it allows the chain to be held. Now, it's kind of loud when I put it in there. But your chain goes in there. That's a quarter inch by 10 feet, and it is less than halfway up on the box. So this would hold a good bit of chain. It's got a nice lid as an option, okay? I believe this rubber piece here is standard, but it's, this lid is an option, as well as these, uh, what do they call them, tight fists or something uh, that are meant to hold a, a shovel uh, or other accessory like that. Boltonhooks.com, uh, coupon code TTWT for 5% off. Let me show you another place that I sometimes store a chain. It's a little bit irritating maybe to your feet, but even growing up, we would store a chain right here on the floorboard of the tractor. Um, a lot of these tractors have a little bit of a hump. It's not perfect for it, uh, but it is an option and it's pretty easy to keep it from falling off. Um, so it's not a, a bad place to store a chain. Let me show you one last hidden compartment. On the 1025R, this is a two and a half inch inside diameter pipe. You can get a piece of PVC, split it in half, and lay your chain in there and slide it in, right? And then if you want, you can put caps on both ends. And that's a, a, a kind of a secret hideaway for a chain. It's a little bit small on the 1025R. The pipe diameter is bigger on the 2038R. And so you can use a bigger piece of PVC to lay it in. So that's another location you might store a chain. Uh, usually when I'm wanting to use a chain, I'm in a hurry and I don't want to take time to lay it out inside that pipe. So I've not gotten the habit of, of using this approach, but I have seen some other people show it and it makes sense. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this. Not a comprehensive lesson on chains, but I hope that it was enough to help you get some understanding of how to use a, a chain, which chain to purchase, um, different ways that it can be used, and, and it's a very 
uh, useful accessory for your compact tractor. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim.